how's it going? I'm mostly back to normal now, but, uh, before I get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I do want to go just a little bit further into some of what I was talking about in the previous video. Yes, Republicans and Democrats are definitely not the same thing, but they're both corrupt. As I said, neither of them truly care about the people. The things they agree on are often not in our best interests. You know, as George Carlin says, uh, and I'm probably misquoting him here, it's a big club and you're not in it, right? <laughs> but that doesn't mean they're the same thing. I don't like a lot of Republican positions, such as the way they want to handle the economy, their view of health care, their approach to taxes, how they seem to have no problem with corporate welfare, but are against any other kind of welfare of any kind. I don't like how they want it to be harder for people who don't want to raise a traditional family. You know, or doesn't strive to raise a traditional family. As if raising a traditional family is the only way someone can be happy. People like Matt Walsh shove that kind of mindset a lot. It's just like, no, there's, there's many ways people can be happy. And if this works for you, great. But don't act like that's the only way anyone can be happy. But right now, out of the two parties, the Republicans seem to be more anti-war than the Democrats. Just by a little bit. I mean, it's not by that much. I think a lot of it is because Republicans like the way that Putin has handled a lot of social issues in Russia. But the Democrats, especially over this past decade, have taken a strange stance. Maybe they've done this the whole time and I just haven't noticed, but uh, I think it's just gotten so much worse over the past decade. It's the idea that nothing our side does could have a significantly bad effect because our hearts are in the right place. You know, because we're trying to do the right thing. It's the notion that every time Republicans or right-wingers do something that we consider bad, that it could never, ever, ever be a reaction to something our side has done. It's the belief that Republicans or right-wingers would have done this regardless of what we did. And no matter how their side explains, yes, this is because of what our side did, our side will still claim their side would have done it regardless. A good example would be the gay men's choir song where they were singing, We'll Convert Your Children. I mean, it was tongue-in-cheek, but that doesn't change how it was interpreted, and it doesn't change how it was spread by a lot of pundits. It was such a stupid thing to do. I've talked about that song and the spread of it and how, how it's affected people uh, with so many people on the left, they claim they're on the left anyway, and they try to claim that it had a negligible effect about how people feel about LGBT activism. Either a negligible effect or no effect at all. And that anyone who was offended at the song already hate LGBT people anyway. And that the song didn't change anything at all. And so I see this same kind of attitude from the Democrats in a number of areas. What scares me the most right now is I just see this same sort of attitude from a number of Democrats when it comes to the notion of if Russia decides to start a nuclear war with the United States. I think we're on that path already. I have a feeling that we'll have troops on the ground in Ukraine within a year. I hope I'm wrong, obviously, but right now I think trying to avoid a war with Russia or China should be on the, the top priority. It's the biggest issue of our time. But we seem to be more at risk of nuclear war than ever now. Regardless of how I feel about their personalities, or how they made their wealth, to me there are two candidates, only two candidates, that are Democrat or Republican, that are running in 2024 for president, who are truly, truly anti-war. Which candidates do you think could avoid us getting in a war with Russia or China? Let me know in the comments. Thanks.